-hmm. My mom mm -hmm. was an avid gardener, mm -hmm. but we didn't pay attention to her then, mm -hmm. like when we were kids. We just knew that don't play in this area because, mm -hmm. yeah, that's her mm -hmm. personal space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, her extension of her personal space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so she always had plants around, and we always, um, because I grew up in a very big yard, mm -hmm. we always had a garden, so we never bought vegetables mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. Like all year round, we would have something in the garden. Mm -hmm cabbage, carrots, tomatoes, papers. Mm -hmm. There was always something thriving in the garden. Mm -hmm. And same for, for fruit trees. Mm -hmm. So I actually feel quite uncomfortable about going to the, to the market to buy avocados <laughs> or papaya. <laughs> because I'm like, these are free. Okay, so I try to live a very organic life mm -hmm. and uh, try to make the best use of everything that I have from from mm -hmm. nature, from my garden. Uh, so I'm vegetarian, going vegan, oh, okay. raw vegan. Whenever I buy a fruit, mm -hmm. I don't throw away the seed. Mm -hmm. I always, yeah. So that's why we have these avocados, uh, guavas, mm -hmm. uh, Mexican apples going on here. So they're in plastics because these are not their permanent home. Okay, so I also um, have this. This is uh, cassava. Oh yeah. Yeah, I had a lot in the yard. Uh -huh. So the other thing that I always think about when I'm uh, bringing plants here, mm -hmm. I think about their food value mm -hmm. and their medicine value. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's really important. Try to balance that out with the ornamental ones. Mm. Yeah, so I had a lot of these, but then I uh, put them out, so they're regrowing. Shame, what's happening here? I see a lot of these are, are empty. They, um, actually there's avocado seeds oh, is in there. Yeah, so I, you can see this one's just popping up right there. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's very tiny, but uh -huh. it's coming. Um, they've taken some of them have taken a while, I think, because it's been so dry. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, so you I grow thought, them from seed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, like I said, whatever s fruit I eat, mm -hmm. I don't, you know, mm -hmm. like throw away the seeds. So I eat a lot of avocados, as you can yeah, see. So yeah. yeah. And is this yeah. soil from the garden? Um, yeah, most of it is from the garden, but mm -hmm. I also got some some from the street actually really yeah like just from our road i asked the kids from the neighborhood i was like i'm gonna pay you one quacha for each bag that you fill and then i mix them with my mouth because i was <laughs> i was on the street just now it looks very sandy yeah yeah so because i i just ha did not have enough soil so oh, okay I was like, okay i'm just gonna work so you take the sandy there. soil and then you mix it with the compost yeah and the other things that you have made yourself in your yard and then yeah. you come up with this because it's it is actually quite crumbly mm -hmm. when i touch it it's not it's not too too hard yeah oh, okay yeah. now that's so nice so you actually ma have managed to come up with a successful formula for potting planting in bags yeah because I think that's one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that when potting in containers you do need to make sure that it's quite porous, porous yeah so that the the water drains out mm -hmm. around 2006 2008 that's when I became aware of the consequences of our lifestyle on mm -hmm. our health later on in our lives and okay I I didn't want to be you know diabetic or not that I've got judgment about that like people are mm -hmm. free to decide um, the kind of lifestyle they'd like to lead and mm -hmm. if they're prepared for the consequences that's fine mm -hmm. yeah and then I have Marcel here and we harvested quite a bit this year I, I was smelling some over there and I'm like hmm. <laughs> so yeah when we're done with this I yeah. know where I'm, I'm gonna be <laughs> yeah we'll have some Masao and um, also I have this um, Hibiscus, mm -hmm. it's got white mm -hmm. pearls, so it's mm -hmm. uh, right now not in season. Mm -hmm. So I hope you're not going to show that in part, but I want to show you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I want to show you the chayote. I have some fruit Hold here. Uh -huh. I have some ch chayote fruit growing. So mm -hmm. this is the mm -hmm. uh, green chayote and i'm gonna get my next seed from here there's the, two types of chayote yeah i know the, the white one yeah so there's the green one as well if you've never seen it this is what it looks like oh wow yeah so it, is there a difference plants. is there um the taste i think that this one is softer mm -hmm. yeah actually let me harvest this one for you thank you i'd really You're appreciate welcome. it this yeah, is fantastic so i normally don't cook it because it's so 
You know what? You might want to grow that one actually. I'm going to try growing it. Yeah, so I'll give you another one uh -huh. that you can taste. So if you don't cook it, you just make a salad like the way you would with um, cucumber. Oh, okay. Yeah, and the skin is very soft. You can actually eat it. Yeah. Yeah, I, unlike the white one. The white one is... The white one I actually peel when I'm cooking. Yeah. Okay, so that's what's going on here and mm -hmm. This plant, mm -hmm. uh, the cassava, it grows really big. It's been here for a few years. So take over and go into the neighbor's yard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I just trimmed it so that it can uh, regrow because it had mm -hmm. some infection. Mm -hmm. I think some aphids mm -hmm. on it. Yeah. But now it's back. Yeah. So at this time of the year, are you able to eat much from your garden? Do you grow stuff to eat or um, um, because of the water? I had some bondue, uh -huh. I had some tomatoes um, and uh, calimbla. Okay. Yeah. So I, I grow those, but then when it just got really dry, I put them out. Yeah. So I'm seeing this little garden over here. Yeah. Can you please or may you please explain to us what's in it? Uh, as you can see, there is um, this is uh, what is bean leaves. Oh yes. Yes, I normally throw beans there. You just throw it. Yes, I just because of space. Uh huh. And it just started growing on its own. Yes. So it was not intentional that you wanted to plant bean leaves, but no, it's just due to space. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if I had a lot of space, I was going to have a big garden. I love it. gardening. Really? I do. So what inspired you to have this garden? Mm, sometimes it's... Um, anyway, it becomes cumbersome for us to like go out to get vegetables. Tomorrow you're outside. The other day you're outside. So it saves time for us and saves money. We're in drought. True. And water is not really available mm -hmm. every day. So we've had no water for five days now. So what I do, the water that I use for rinsing plates, mm -hmm. I water this small garden. Oh, really? I use it to water, yes. So I don't like leave it to go dry. Okay. So is that like a daily thing, like you water this garden daily? Since I wash plates daily, yes. <laughs> okay, that does make sense. Does make a lot of yes. sense. So to put a space night chopper, as long as you have some space to actually plant <laughs> some vegetables, you can actually have a meal or two from it. True. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, thank you so much for your time. Then I also um, grow a lot of herbs. Mm. And they also dried out, so I had mint, um, yeah, different kind of herbs. Mm -hmm. But I didn't throw them out mm -hmm. when I noticed that they were not going to survive. Mm -hmm. I actually harvested them, dried them, and made them into powder. So I used them in my cooking. Oh, okay. yeah. So part of the things that I do that keep me at fifty percent is juicing and. Um, blending my foods mm -hmm. so i would usually add local fruits mm -hmm. uh, like pineapples mm -hmm. um, i try as much as possible to avoid fruit that's imported because i don't know how long um, mm -hmm. it's been alive mm -hmm. and what chemicals have been sprayed on it to keep it mm -hmm. alive and there we have it beetroot and uh, cucumber juice all right want to have a taste <laughs> so I get my food from local farmers. So I go to the farmers markets. Mm -hmm. uh, Choose the market is one of my favorite places. I go to JCS. The food is always fresh there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and if there's a, a farmers market, the monthly one near me, I would certainly check myself in and see what I can find from there. So these are some of my my staples. And so when I juice, when you juice. It just extracts the juice from the fruit or from the vegetable. Mm -hmm. It leaves out the, the fiber, well, which remains in the juicer as a pulp. Mm -hmm. So that pulp, I do not throw away uh, if I can help it. Right now, mm -hmm. we're experiencing a lot of Zesco issues. So I've been throwing out a lot of pulp and it's very painful for me. But I still don't just let it you know, go to waste. I put it in my garden. Mm -hmm. So this is what the pulp looks like. So that's the... Cucumber mostly, and then the rest of it fell in here. 
you have uh, yeah the beetroot so yeah so this um, is beetroot pulp it's dried it has been dehydrated mm -hmm. yeah so the and as you can see there are also seeds in here so which means there was uh, probably cucumber or watermelon mm -hmm. I use that for my for my liquid part to you know to make the juice a little bit more liquidy so those are the seeds and I always add ginger I always add turmeric because of their anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. properties and many other benefits so that's that and this one is mostly better carotene so this is probably carrot yeah I can see there's actually a carrot piece here and so after I get them out of the juicer then they'll come in this baby here this is a domestic dehydrator yeah so right now uh, it has uh, bananas I'm dehydrating bananas nice yeah I bought a lot of bananas recently because um, of the price yeah and then there are these are local bananas local bananas I don't think we have them throughout the year in abundance yeah so I got a lot this is not even half of them mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is like five trays because it's um it's a domestic one usually it takes about 10 to 15 hours to mm -hmm. dehydrate completely mm -hmm. yeah but you don't need a dehydrator oh to okay do this yeah you can slice up your bananas and just let them sit in the in the sun mm -hmm. yeah um, but don't let them sit in the direct sunlight because it's not good okay. so you can put them in the direct sunlight for maybe 30 minutes to one hour just like human beings you mm -hmm. don't need the direct sunlight for the whole time because it can cause skin damage mm -hmm. yeah so the same with the fruit it can uh, denature the food so it loses its food value okay so you just cover it with a nice little net mm -hmm. uh, or put it in a in a veranda where you're not getting the direct sunlight so you can mm -hmm. just put it on a reed mat and oh sacks mm -hmm. whatever you have yeah and then uh, leave them to dry mm -hmm. I also dry um, different leaves for vegetables for fruits so like I have here these are guava leaves and mm -hmm. guava leaves have got a lot of uh, mm -hmm. properties mm -hmm. in them that are good for our health mm -hmm. so um, good for your hair good for your skin mm -hmm. for fertility and so on so I make tea out of this mm -hmm. or you can uh, make seasonings for your meals so like this is from the one of the pulp I think this is uh, maybe kale or celery mm -hmm. yeah and then uh, I made so after they dry then I put them in the blender I crush them mm -hmm. and I like this bottle because mm -hmm. it's like that nice yeah so mm -hmm. can I hope you can see that very well yeah so it's um, it works out best and as much as possible I avoid plastic so I use glass or pepper so this is a pepper canister um, I think what's in here okay so it's orange so it's probably that mm -hmm. yeah so then this is dried guava from my garden so you know how yes please have a taste uh, you know how um, when fruits ripen they all ripen at the same time mm -hmm. so you can't eat everything so this is how I preserve them mm -hmm. yeah and uh, recently people have become interested in my product so I've been selling I've been mm -hmm. selling the juices um, so I sell different packages mm -hmm. so some are for weight loss uh, mm -hmm. some are just for detox so the, these are very filling mm -hmm. because when I make a juice one liter I use a lot of fruit I use mm -hmm. a lot of vegetables so it's all the nutrition that you need is in there mm -hmm. and I understand I've seen videos of people uh, reversing different kinds of disease I like the way that you have intercropped that you have your ornamental plants and you know your food plants, food plants and your vines <laughs> all together in whatever area yeah thank you mm. it's a very natural way of growing things and I think the plants really do appreciate it much more yeah yeah and they feed into each other because they give different nutrients exactly to the soil. Um, a lot of gardens can be very sterile with just a lawn a flower bed a tree all distinctly separate mm. yeah. Um, so yeah this is definitely well because of the space I have to <laughs> 
I suspect that even with space, your gardening style wouldn't wouldn't change. change. Much. Wouldn't yeah. change. <laughs> it wouldn't change. <laughs> <laughs>